Bruce in Paisley, Scotland. That's got to be a colorful place. Hey, he says, I'm just wondering about your thoughts on preamplifiers. Having chosen your monoblock power amplifiers, common sense would suggest you use the same manufacturer's preamplifier. But is playing safe a missed opportunity to have something special? Great videos. Thank you for them. Bruce. Um, yeah, I mean, look, people mix and match all day long, right? They do it all the time. And I am personally a fan of sticking with the same if you can. Now, not everybody makes preamplifiers, right? You, you look at your typical DAC availability. What's out there for DACs, right? Well, DAC manufacturers typically don't make preamps. Now, is that because, and they don't support preamps. <laughs> I just wrote a post about that. And the post basically asked a, a kind of a, a piercing question. And that piercing question is, do DAC manufacturers not make and support preamplifiers because they don't make preamplifiers and therefore it's not in their best interest? Or do they not make preamplifiers because they really don't believe in them? I'm guessing the former, not the latter. And, you know, as, as a company that makes everything, we make speakers, preamps, DACs, power amps, you know, you, you name it, we kind of make it. Um, we understand that many people would rather have their DAC go straight into the power amp. And I would say about half of our customers do exactly that. And that's fine. And that's one of the reasons, like, in the new PMG Signature DAC, we put an analog volume control, really rare. This is almost never done. Uh, in, in a typical DAC, the volume control is digital. And what's wrong with that? Well, nothing wrong with it. We did that for years. The problem with it is that there is a specific signal to noise ratio, a noise floor, a distortion floor, that let's say it's here, right? And when we measure that, we say it's got 100 dB of signal to noise ratio, which is good. That's only when the signal is full. When the signal starts going down digitally, that noise floor stays the same. Now the signal to noise ratio is 50 dB if you're at half. That's not very good. So it, it's, and that's an, that's an exaggeration. So don't get all wigged out. Man. People in the comments section on YouTube, yeah, you. <laughs> They're like, bow, 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 bow. so <laughs> I probably just overmodulated YouTube and blew it up. <clears throat> there you go. Okay. Anyway, it gets worse. Let's just say that it just gets worse. And as you turn that up and down um, digitally, the noise floor, would, whatever it is, remains the same. Now, if you do what we did in the new PMG Signature 512 DAC put an analog, a really good stepped attenuator, at the output of the DAC, now the noise floor and the signal go down. And so when you're at zero, there is no noise. There's no noise floor. And as you start turning it up, the noise floor raises up a little bit. Because remember, it's 100 dB down from the full signal. So it always stays there. It always goes up and down. And that, again, is one of the advantages of using a preamplifier. Same thing happens, right? All right, I'm off into the weeds. I wanted to show you something. This, now this, you can see this is just an engineering sample because we actually have a front panel on ours. This is uh, the inside of a new PMG signature preamplifier. And one of the things that we haven't talked about for a while is power supplies. So any amplification device, any analog amplification device is really a valve, that's the preamplifier or the power amplifier, an electronic valve that is turning the power supply on and off, feeding into whatever you're feeding. So this is a preamplifier, right? And essentially all this stuff is there so that when you put a signal in, let's say from your DAC, and it starts going up, there's a valve in here, and all in this, these parts. And this valve, in essence, this single valve, is turning this power supply on or off in varying degrees, 
feeding into your power amplifier, which means you're listening to the power supply, okay? And I, I know this is a hard concept for a lot of people to get, but think about it as your garden hose, right? You got a little faucet over here, and as you turn this handle, what are you doing? Well, you're not directly connecting up your motion, but your motion is directly controlling the flow of water going out. And so when you're watering your lawn, the quality of that water, the quality of that pressure um, is directly going to uh, affect the output of your hose. In the same way, the power supply is the most critical place in a preamplifier. And you can see what we've done. I don't know that this has ever been done before, not to my knowledge. Look at the look at these caps. These are these beauties. Now I know I'm nerding out because I like I like stuff like this. You, you, this this beautiful cap. This is uh, this is a hundred microfarad film cap. And what do you got here? Four of those. So you got four hundred microfarads of film caps. And I'm not going to bore you with why film caps are better, but just needless to say. Look inside of your preamplifier, and you won't see this. This is what you see inside of a PMG signature preamplifier. It's in the 50 years of building, almost 51 now, of building preamplifiers. This kicks ass. This is the best, the finest preamplifier that we've ever, ever made. Uh, Darren Myers designed this. We voiced it. It's amazing. And it's all power supply driven. What was his original question? Here I'm going. Oh, so yes, preamplifiers are very important. And yes, I think you should, if you like the amplifier from a manufacturer, I would highly recommend at least giving a try to their preamplifier because if they're anything like us, where everything is voiced and thought out, then they've matched their preamp to their power amp and you get the benefit of it. All right. Thanks.